Hardwoods and softwoods, Tommy, uh, can be confusing because the names actually don't really represent whether they are hard or soft. Perfect example of the two pieces that you brought in. This is very light. This is balsa wood. I mean, that is almost weightless. It's unbelievable. Right. I mean, they use it for making model planes, right. little buildings, all that kind of stuff. Now, Yet look, it's considered a hardwood. It's a hardwood. This is a hardwood also. Now, feel that. Oh, jeez, it's like a brick. Right, that's lignum vitae. It's one of the heaviest woods that, that they have. And that wood actually doesn't even float. That's how heavy it is. I have a sample of balsa wood right here. Mm. Put it in water. Right, Floats. most woods float, but that one certainly does. Yeah, all right, so this, see, this goes right to the bottom. Unbelievable. All right. So that's uh, a good example of why the name doesn't necessarily represent what it is. But we do have a very clear distinction between hardwoods and softwoods, and it's not really how hard or soft they are. It's where they come from. It's where they come from, type of trees. And your hardwoods come from trees that drop leaves. Right. So right. those are deciduous, right? They mm -hmm. lose all the leaves in the winter, and they grow back again. And the others are softwoods, are conifer trees with needles. Right, so any conifer has got a needle. So we're talking what, spruce, pine, cedars? Yep, yeah, a lot of those woods have it, but they also grow very fast, so they will yield a lot of wood. Right. And they're usually very straight, so you can get a lot of wood out of the length, right. unlike a, a deciduous tree, which have big branches and knots and everything else, so you can't get the material out of them. Gotcha, so softwoods and hardwoods, and then of course, more importantly for us, it's, it's when you use them and how you use them. Exactly. I mean, we use a lot of softwoods in framing houses. For example, right. a, a fir two by four and there's different grades of lumber. In lumber, you look for the knots, the clearer the wood, the stronger the wood is. And this is something that we're gonna put into a kiln to dry it out, because if we don't, it has a tendency to warp and twist. Right, you wanna get it in as small as it can be into the house, because you don't want it to shrink once you put the heat on. Framing material, but then also some uh, trim material. Yeah, this is a poor grade of trim. This is a pine, soft wood, mm -hmm. has a lot of knots. It will twist and warp and everything else. Yeah. Uh, but now if you look at the harder woods, now uh, here's a piece of maple. Right, a good example of a hardwood. Good example of, you can see how tight the grain is. It's relatively heavy. This is a great material for making cabinet fronts, cabinet doors. They actually spin a lot of this veneer off of trees when they're making plywood sure. because it stains up very nicely, but it won't stain dark. Right. Then we've got the mighty oak, which is something we also make a lot of furniture out of. Red and white oak, you see a lot of that. People love the look of oak. We also do it for red flooring because it's underfoot. Yep. And also you can really see the difference in the grain right here. Yep. All right, so what happens with this wood like like this oak right here, when you stain it, some of these grains will really be pronounced because believe it or not, there are parts of it that are softer than the other. Mm -hmm. And the softer parts have a little more open pores so they take the stain deeper. Right, and then within hardwoods, there's different categories, right? Yep. So if we were to step it up, they call them sort of fine woods, you know, a little nicer to work with. Fine woods, a lot of cabinetry's made out of walnut. Right. And a lot of the older houses, the turnings, the balusters, the newel posts, the railings, are made of walnut right. because it's great material to turn with. W wood turners use this for making uh, bowls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's great to practice. Then we've got the uh, mahogany, which you love to use outside when you're trying to resist the rot in the water. Mahogany is a great wood to deal with outside. This is black mahogany. They actually make boats out of it. That's hmm. how good it is. Right. right. And so then uh, after we have the uh, fine woods, we can even go a step further into these exotic hardwoods. And oh, you've got yeah. a couple right there. The exotic hard. Look at this. This is purple heart, all right? Obviously, we're going to why they call it that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> all right. Again, now here's zebra wood. Right. All right. Very cool. These are great accent pieces. Bowl turners, guys that like to inlay and stuff like that, they use this to accent pieces of, uh, of mm -hmm. products that they're making. So in terms of uses, we have made some furniture projects out of the softer woods, out of the pines, but those are things that we're gonna paint and they weren't really that fussy. If we're making furniture or anything nicer, we're gonna be reaching for the hardwoods. Up and in for these, I mean, at the price point, you're really reserving these for nice, small projects. Absolutely. I always suggest that when we're making projects and we, when we're building a project, we, you notice we always use something cheap when we've made a jig, we want to make sure that the jig is right. You practice on something cheap before you cut it on something good. Yep, got it. All right, good information. I love it. Here, uh, you take the balsa. Oh, I'll thanks. take the. Can you handle that? Lig lignum? Yeah, lignum. V v v heavy. Very heavy, very expensive. You're sinking. Very.